This country is facing an alcohol crisis that the government is neither recognising nor dealing with. That's the view of the Conservative chair of the cross-party parliamentary group on alcohol harm, the MP Fiona Bruce. In October last year, this programme reported, we discovered that over £300 million has been cut from drug and alcohol treatment in England since 2013, with funding falling from just under £1.1 billion to £744 million. Now we've obtained figures which reveal the number of people accessing publicly funded detox and rehab for alcohol has almost halved since then. Alcohol-related deaths in 2016 reached their highest number since records began, raising concerns that many are left without help. Caroline Turriff reports. I ended up living under this bush in uh, Regency Square Park in Brighton for five months and it was the, uh, the deer, basically, of, sort of 20 years of alcoholism. You know, I'd become homeless. And I knew that something had to change, otherwise I was going to literally sort of drink myself to death. I met James walking in the park where he was once living, homeless and desperate. He was 33 when he decided to get help and went to Brighton Council, who put him on their waiting list for rehab. Uh, and I was on the waiting list for a year. Um, I was clearly killing myself and getting towards the end. But ultimately, I just could not get a place. I got to the point where I didn't see any hope at all of getting into to rehab or any form of treatment. Brighton Council told us that while they cannot comment on individual cases, when people are assessed as needing residential rehabilitation, they make sure this service is offered to them as quickly as possible. James eventually got a bed funded by public donations at a Salvation Army rehab. He is now almost two years clean and has never relapsed since he first went into rehab. I've been back at work for six months. Um, I'm just about to move into a new flat. Without that bedding rehab, at some point I would have drunk myself to death because my liver was already uh, cirrhotic. Yeah, I would have been dead, basically. Over £300 million has been cut from drug and alcohol treatment in England since 2013. This programme has discovered that during that time, almost half of units offering NHS or publicly funded detox have closed. And the number of people accessing alcohol treatment at those types of centres has almost halved. This does not mean that help is not needed. Public Health England estimate that there are around 600,000 dependent drinkers needing treatment, but that less than one in five actually get it. Today I will relax and trust that the good I need will find me when the time is right. Get in. Oh, the greatest. That's right. At the Living Room Project in Hertfordshire, recovering addicts read out inspirational quotes to each other. Frank told me he ended up in hospital because of his drinking. I was never offered publicly funded residential rehab. I'd been run over by a car in blackout from drinking. My friends who I was with, they thought I was dead. I had a pretty serious head injury that I didn't stay in hospital to get proper treatment for because I needed a drink so bad. I was getting injured a lot. I have attempted to take my life a couple of times. My parents definitely thought I was going to die and uh, I did too. I didn't think I was going to get out of this madness. His experience is not unique. Alcohol-related hospital admissions have risen almost 20% since 2010 and are now running at their highest levels ever. And the latest figure for alcohol-related deaths is the highest number since records began. Fiona Bruce is a Conservative MP and chairs the all-party parliamentary group on alcohol harm. I think we are facing a crisis. We're facing a crisis that isn't recognised or being addressed by government. We need a national alcohol strategy. All of this is having an impact on the NHS. Accident and emergency centres on a Saturday night, the figures show there can be as much as 80% of the admissions are alcohol-related. We've got domestic violence. We've got children of alcoholics who are struggling to flourish. As publicly funded units close, patients have been forced to go private. The majority of private residential rehabs have seen their alcohol patients double since the cut started, with many seeing a sharp rise in the past two years. And the number of private rehabs has gone up by almost 70% since 2012. Fiona Bruce is worried by these figures. The increase in private providers and the parallel decrease in public providers for alcohol treatment is a really serious issue because it's a matter of social justice 
that people should be able to access help when they need it, not according to their pocket. Difficulties regarding alcohol consumption do hit the poorest particularly. Treatment for uh, alcohol dependency works. Around 60% of those who are treated are treated successfully. And we also know that uh, for every one pound invested in alcohol treatment, there is about five pounds saved to the public purse. The Department of Health and Social Care said that local authorities were best placed to make choices for their community and that they're investing more than £16 billion in local government public health services in the current spending period. Frank had no option but to pay for rehab. Me and my mum kind of had to convince my dad that that was the way we had to go. Yeah, he used pretty much all of his savings, you know. It was a pretty big burden on the family, to be honest, to, to send me there. They sacrificed their future to save the life of their son, and that does fill me with a lot of guilt and shame. As publicly funded treatment centres continue to close, this could lead to more and more pressure on the NHS and force ever larger numbers into private treatment.